Welcome to the Wilson Center and the Basic 2 class. You should have taken Basic 1 where we cover a lot of shop safety stuff. Uh, first, we're going to go over our principles of safety. This is how we're going to ask you to uh, assume responsibility for your own safety and the safety of all those around you. So I'm going to read through these and as I do, just follow along. If you have questions, feel free to email me. Uh, so for your own safety, I have attention, attire, and ask for help. Uh, attention, give your work and your tools your undivided attention. Plan your process beforehand and be aware of your surroundings and ejection paths. Attire, wear ANSI Z80 safety, safety glasses at all times. Long pants covering the ankle. Closed toed shoes. Long hair should be tied back and long sleeves rolled up past the elbow when working with rotating machinery. And no loose or dangling jewelry, hoodie strings, neckties, or anything else which could be caught and pull you into a tool. Uh, ask for help. Staff, mentors, and peers are here to keep you safe. All of your questions are welcome. Uh, ask if you're the least bit unsure about the safety or effectiveness of your next action. And then continue to ask as your confidence grows and you push your goals further. Uh, for the safety of those around you, I have startling, standards, and see something, say something. So startling, allow others to give their work their undivided attention. Do not approach people from behind. Move into their line of sight before addressing them, and no horseplay. Standards, safety is the foundation of all standards at WSTPC. Uh, adherence to all standard practices and operating procedures is the minimum requirement for safe use of the facility. Uh, see something, say something. You are empowered to intervene if you see unsafe practices. If you are uncomfortable approaching your peers, address your concerns to staff. And finally, we ask you to be polite and professional in all of your interactions. Again, if you have questions about those, please email me. We will talk about tool safety while we're at the tools. So the basic two project is this little pencil holder. Uh, pencil holder is pretty straightforward. It is a top and a bottom. We're going to cut, punch, drill, tap and screw and finish. So we have a nice finished pencil holder you can take forever. Uh, to do that, we're going to grab our manufacturing packet. So I'm going to come over here to the black basket. The black basket has a basic two tab where I'm going to grab uh, our little packet. So the first thing here is safety policy. So this is additional safety stuff that I would like you to read through. If you have questions, again, email me. So there's a front and a back to that. Then we have our basic two training pack or sheet. This is everything we're gonna cover in class in detail. So if you have questions, you can always refer back to this. This is our drawing. The drawing has a front and a back. So you can see the back um, because there is a top and a bottom to our drawing. Our basic two project facts. This is gonna be some frequently asked questions uh, that we will address in this. And then we have our drill tap chart and then our speed RPM chart. Okay, now when you come in to do this project, uh, you need to have a manufacturing plan. The manufacturing plan is a step-by-step -step process and how you're gonna make this. So I'm looking for how to use the tool correctly, safely, and accurately, okay? Uh, there's a good example inside that project fact sheet. Once you have got it, once you've turned it into staff, uh, staff will review it and they'll give you the go ahead, and when they give you the go ahead, you're gonna get this basic two checkout kit. So that's everything that you need for this project to be successful. Uh, any questions, please email me and we will take it from there. Uh, let's get started. So uh, first we need to look at our drawing again. We'll look at the top part first. So. Inside the drawing, we have a couple things if you've never seen one before. We have our title box. This is gonna be what the name of the part is, what scale we're working at, what, how many sheets there are to the project. So there's two of two, because there's a top and a bottom. We have some stuff that's important, like what the dimension is in, this is in inches, what the material is in aluminum, and then we have some special instructions for the part itself. Then if you look at it, we have dimensions, what the overall part's gonna look like. We have locations of features, and then we have actually details about those features. OK, 
Okay, so material is aluminum. That means we are going to come over to the basic two drawer. This is the second drawer on the way to the right. Uh, we'll pull it open and I'm gonna get my sheet metal out. For this, we'll be using the calipers. Calipers are gonna allow us to be accurate uh, while making our part. So we're going to be using our drawing. Uh, we'll look and we see I have one dimension at one inch and then two and a half inches plus two and a half inches plus two inches. So uh, calipers are gonna be more accurate than a ruler, but they're less accurate than a micrometer. So when we use this, uh, we're gonna be looking at a few things. Um, so the long part here with all these numbers is called the scale. This is the dial. Uh, the dial is going to allow us to be accurate to a thousandth of an inch, which is 0 .001. Uh, the roller here will allow me to open and close the caliper. Um, we have this lock knob here. The lock knob will actually lock the jaws in place. The jaws here are going to be measuring the outer diameter the inner diameter and the depth of something, okay? Uh, when I'm actually going to use this, I want to zero it first. So I'm going to close it, put a little bit of force on there and use the dial lock here to actually lock it in place. Uh, so I'll unlock it first and I can move the dial back and forth and I want to get to where my zero is on that needle. And once I'm there, I'll lock it, okay? So when we're measuring with the caliper, I will open this up. Uh, and if I look at the scale, this big number one here, uh, it is one inch. So that means each of the, these hashes are hundredths of an inch. So that's point 0.1 inches. On the dial here, each dash is one thousandth of an inch. So when we measure something, we're going to basically add them up. Okay. So if I wanted to be at one and a half inches, I would go to the five and I would get right to the zero. So that's going to be one and a half inches. For my drawing, we need to be at one inch. So I'm going to bring this back to one. And I want to be on the zero. If I'm not on the zero, if I'm at the 10, I am at one inch and 10 thousandths. So I'll lock my lock knob here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the caliper to scribe our material. So when we scribe our material, we're going to use the points of our caliper or yep, caliper. Uh, and we're going to rest one point on the outside edge of your material. The other point is going to actually mark the line. So this is stainless steel on aluminum. Aluminum is a lot softer, softer, so it should mark fairly easily. I'm going to put a little force down, and when I do, I'm just going to drag it across. So I'm going to be on the edge, and I'm going to start pulling across. So it doesn't hurt to move some of these things. Uh, now that I have my mark that I can see, I want to make sure I can see it, so I might have to scribe it twice or I can use a Sharpie to scribe across the Sharpie mark and I'll have a lot more contrast. Other than that, we're ready to cut.